One of the things that you can read about when you're starting beekeeping is all the different types of genetic strains there are of honeybees. And it usually makes you wonder which one you should start with. In this video, I'm going to, I'm going to give you two reasons why you shouldn't worry about the genetic strain of your honeybees. And then, then towards the end, I'm going to give you exactly which genetic strain of honeybee you should use. Stick around. Welcome back to the Hive Doctor. I'm your beekeeping mentor, and it's my job to take the guesswork out of beekeeping for you. Believe it or not, genetic strain and the types of bees that you run in your apiary can actually be kind of a hot topic and a controversial issue among beekeepers. Uh, a lot of them swear by using certain strains over others. The first reason why you shouldn't worry about the genetic stock that you keep and maintain in your apiaries, I'm going to give an answer uh, through ex through, uh, through example, uh, when I was working under my mentor in Florida, he requeened many of his hives using Russian queens. Now, Russians are known for being varroa resistant, uh, cold hardy because of the climate that they're in over there. They're a very vigorous queen. And therefore, the beekeeper thinking, hey, I'm going to get me some Russian queen, uh, is thinking they're going to be getting a very vigorous stock. And, you know, that's logical. It makes sense. Within two weeks of having requeened those hives, our hives had killed the Russian queens and begun to raise their own. So it ended up being a waste of time requeening them and a waste of money by buying those queens to begin with. I can't explain the, all the intricacies of it, but bees will do what they want to do. They seem to have this attitude of their own despite what the beekeeper hopes to do. For example, requeening with Russian queens, you think that they would just accept them and keep going, and that all of your bees after that are gonna be Russian bees. And then any queens that your hives make in the future are gonna be Russian queens. But that's just simply not the way it works. And that brings us to reason number two why you shouldn't worry about keeping a certain genetic stock of honeybee. And that's because no matter what, at some point, your bees are going to have to requeen. When your queens get older, they're going to have to replace them. And your drones that are from that Russian stock are going to go out and mate with whatever other honeybees they can find. Your new queens are going to go out and mate with whatever drone stock that they can find. And that could be from another beekeeper within your area that you're not even aware of. And now, you got these queens coming home having just mated with Italians, uh, Buckfast, Cordovan, you name it. Who knows what they've been mating with, especially if it's a feral colony, which is a wild colony not kept by beekeepers. They're probably in a tree or side of a house somewhere. No matter what uh, genetic strain you start off with, it will be watered down later when those bees start intermingling with the other bees in your environment. You're going to end up with a mutt and a mongrel, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I'll be getting to that shortly. But generally, when you start to buy bees, you'll see what's available is the most common thing available is going to be an Italian queen. Just go ahead and, and get that. Start with that. They've got great traits. But just know that overall, your bees are eventually going to be a conglomeration and a mix of genetic diversity. And it's the genetic diversity that you really want. That's when biology seems to thrive the most, when there is diversity. When you get too much of one thing, there are too many factors involved to make that system fail because it's not backed up by other elements needed in that homeostatic environment. You've got to have diversity when it comes to anything really, but especially nature. So you want a diverse genetic stock in your hives for whatever. Uh, it could be bees that uh, make honey more quickly than other genetic strains. Uh, and believe it or not, you do want a slightly aggressive bee. You don't want uh, a really docile calm bee like Cordovan. They're really gentle to work with, but they don't make squat for honey. And uh, to be honest, that's why you're getting into this, whether you like to admit it right now or not, because they're called a honey bee. <laughs> um, and 
part of managing hives, like I've said in the past, is harvesting that honey. You've got to take it. So no matter what your goals are, when you start beekeeping, even if honey is not your primary goal, harvesting honey, remember, as I've said in other videos, is part of hive management. So you're going to want a bee that makes honey because ones that don't will not have the resources to continue to thrive. And they're always going to be hungry. I don't know how it is that Cordovans make it, but they do. And it's probably because they uh, genetically diversify themselves when they go out and intermingle, mate, rendezvous with other bees. Now I want to give you an idea of what genetic strain you should keep. And keep in mind, this is totally my opinion, but it's an opinion based on experience. The type of genetic strain that you guys are going to want to keep are the ones that survive, the ones that make it through winter, and the ones that are there in spring to greet you at the first hive inspection, the ones that didn't starve or didn't succumb to mites despite your best efforts to uh, get the mite load under control. You're going to want to keep whatever genetic strain are your survivors because your survivors are the ones that are adapted to your local climactic environment. They're the ones that are going to make it. So whatever that genetic strain is, it's probably not going to be a pure Italian or a pure Cordovan or Russian, Buckfast, German, whatever, you name it. Um, it's going to be a mix of those things. It's because of that mix, that diversity in genetics that your bees probably survived. Every year, the my hives that make it through winter they look incredible when it comes time to split or or make honey or set them up for the honey flow they're the ones that made it through winter and they're the ones that are my strongest i try my best to um, propagate my operation from those from that survivor stock those hives that are the strongest the ones that are weak it's easy to not use those because they're not strong enough to make splits from and make more bees from them. That's what a split is. So that's my experience with genetic stock. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Whatever your opinion is, keep it clean. Uh, drop me one of these uh, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time here on The Hive Doctor.